things in the sky in the morning, these tic-tac-toe patterns all over the place. It's got to be more than just jet fumes and trails, huh? No, it is. In fact, let me give you the history of this thing, how they started it. You know, they originally started this back in the 40s and the 50s, and they were spraying silver iodide, and that was relatively harmless, harmless to the environment compared to what they're doing now. But then they started doing more and more cloud seeding and weather control, and then the military decided they were going to start teaching their Air Force command academies how to do this. In fact, they actually have chemtrail classes in the military. You actually pull up the journals, if you'd like, online. And what happens is they're spraying these things through the jet nozzles that go into the engines, and they're creating nanocrystals and they're being put into the air for the weather radar and for the scalar radar. It creates a particulate plasma that can be activated through microwave energy, such as through uh, piezoelectric crystals or through electric optical properties that can be done through, like, HARP. Uh, you can use HARP, which is microwave energy, in, a, in what's called a phased array telescope, or not a telescope, a um, antenna, says the George, and you can actually cause this stuff to glow and become incredibly hot, and you can actually heat up a section of it up to 10,000 degrees in just a few seconds. The military want to be able to do that because they have an incoming ICBM missile. They can actually heat this 10,000-degree pocket of air up in front of the missile, and they can actually cause it to explode as soon as it hits this 10,000 degrees. It'll just literally melt the missile, destroying it, destroying the military vehicle. Uh, strontium and barium and strontium can take, can take these chemtrails into the field of scalar physics. Uh, this allows you to up-concentrate energy at any spot you want to. For instance, uh, you have nuclear bomb-type explosions using chemtrails by creating scalar waves. By discharging, I'll explain to you what those are in a second. By discharging scalar fields, you have massive, massive explosions, and that could be what happened in 1908 when Tunguska was, uh, had that massive explosion. A lot of people believe that Tesla had actually activated the War Contiff Tower back then, George, and actually just tried to broadcast energy into the North Pole, overshot the North Pole, hit Russia, and wiped out tens of thousands of acres to 2,000 square miles of forest was completely destroyed when he discharged a scalar wave, which is what some people are thinking happened from the Warkin Trifliff Tower. The energy can be actually manipulated in the piezoelectric fields. This is what they're spraying with these piezoelectric crystals with the barium and the strontium and the aluminum. Uh, you can actually freely move through the field, but it can be triggered by external inputs. You can actually move energy to any place you need to put it. You can make it vibrate. You can turn it up to heat. You can create electromagnetic energy or sound. Uh, this is back where the intelligence community comes in now because they can use sound to make external voices. People, they can hear voices. You've heard that the, they've got this term called the voice of God. They can hit you with certain generated energy frequencies by using this, this technology and make you nauseous, make you want to vomit, uh, make you suicidally depressed within minutes. Uh, the military, again, they use the rockets to weather control earth properties. They can also trigger earthquakes, George. That's one of the things that people don't understand. There are a lot of earthquakes that are being triggered. They're being triggered at the 10 kilometer depth. And the way you do that is just play, it's just simply plate tectonics. The earthquakes should be evenly distributed throughout the mm -hmm. country, but they're not. And this is what's crazy. What you'd have to do is send an 11 kilohertz signal, 11 hertz signal through and it can modulate and trigger earthquakes through the use of scalar fields. Uh, this was done with uh, James Maxwell's equations, which have been called the second great you know, unification of physics after Isaac Newton. He's right up there with Einstein. And this is how they move all this energy around the planet. And how they make these scalar waves is if you have two radio waves, like if you have FM wave, radio wave, and you lay one radio wave on top of another radio wave, they have like a little hump in them. They're like a wave you see on a... Just like, like, a, like you take a water hose and you shake it, you have a wave go the other way. If you have two waves opposite of each other and you do them both at the same time with a phased array telescope, uh, phased array antenna, what happens is you create a longitudinal wave. They annihilate each other, leaving a longitudinal wave. This is why they have to use phased array systems. And then what happens is if you lay two longitudinal waves over on top of each other, George, you create a scalar wave. And the scalar wave is what picks up the energy from the planet. It can be discharged at any point on the planet. But what's interesting about the scalar waves is they go through time space, according to John Max to James Maxwell's equations, and they go into the fourth dimension. That's what's so interesting about them. And all the information about this type of physics has been pulled, pulled out of the public domain and is only used for military applications now, so they're not giving us the research on that any longer. And what's interesting about that is scalar waves have no time or distance variable. In other words, if you transmit a scalar wave right now from this planet to 1,000 light years away, it's there instantaneously in the transmission of, 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 uh, of information. And that's why it's like thought. Thought waves are scalar waves. Uh, prayers are scalar waves. 
and you actually change the very fabric of space-time by using scalar waves for prayer or for thought or even the words that you can speak to. How old is the technology, Ted? Oh, gosh. The technology was originally postulated by Maxwell back in the 1800s. Uh, then, of course, not, Einstein talked about it. Uh, Newton never really got into that. Uh, but well, I mean, in at, terms at, of the mid, mid 1800s, and then, and then with Tesla, Tesla's the one who really brought it to the forefront in the late 1800s and early 1900s, especially with the Warren Cliff Tower. This technology has been around for a long, long time. This is the same technology, uh, George, they use in the space based, space based weapons platforms, the Star Wars programs they've talked about. Uh, it's the same weapon systems that some people believe were used in taking down of 9 11, like Dr. Judy Wood. That's right. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that are involved in this. This is this extreme microwave energy laid on top of itself, creating these scalar waves, which can be discharged anywhere on the planet. That's why people are saying, you think we'll have a nuclear war. We don't even need nuclear wars anymore. We can lay, we can lay entire cities and regions of, to, to waste from outer space now with the scalar weaponry we have right now. It's, it's the crazy stuff. The technology is so far advanced, so much more than we ever thought it would be. Or even neutron bombs that don't even touch... Uh, infrastructure, they just take out people. Yeah. Now, a lot of this stuff was also Victor Schauberger's work. I want to make sure I give him credit, too. Uh, when these scalar waves are broadcast, you know, via HARP, this is fourth dimensional physics that Maxwell talked about. You create scalar potential. And the scalar value is the number of each third point in the field of mathematics. It gives you a fourth dimension of time space. The scalar potential becomes self organizing. The scalar potential eddies throughout the planet, give shape and form to the holographic universe we're in. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to control the attention field of the holographic universe we're in by changing the very fabric of time space by using the energy contained in the planet. It's really interesting when you start studying this, as I've studied this a lot. Uh, you can actually use it to cut tunnels into solid concrete, solid rock. You can actually melt rock with it and put tunnels right through. And what's interesting is that people understand when you pray, the meditation produces thoughts, and thoughts are scalar waves, and they're real, they're incredibly powerful energy waves. And, of course, I've discussed this many times as far as scalar waves and information technologies and how you can actually talk across the universe. That's the same way we talked about at the beginning of the show about how the blood of Christ works. And uh, if you want, we can do that too, but we can continue on, this, on the technology here on the scalar waves because there's a lot more information to cover on scalar waves, on Morgellons, and also on harp and also this chemtrail stuff so many people are hearing hums across north america these low grade hums